Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Lake House in Microsoft Fabric. If you haven't heard about what Microsoft Fabric is, I have a different video about it. But in this video in particular, we are talking about Lake House, what it is, how you can create it, how you can load data into it, and how you can get data from it in Power BI. So let's go and check it out. If this is the first time you are hearing Microsoft Fabric, I have a different video. You can go and check it out. Basically, it's an end-to-end -end, um, data and analytics uh, solution, software as a service, cloud-based, um, empowered by Microsoft. It is a technology that contains um, different workloads, a workload for data engineering, for data storage, for data warehousing, for visualization, Power BI. It uses some of the components uh, which are already familiar to data analytics users such as Power BI, Synapse, and Azure Data Factory. Now, one of the elements of, um, of the Microsoft Fabric environment, one of the objects you can create is called Lake House. In this video, I'm going to talk about that. So what is a Lake House? Uh, a Lake House, um, like the picture that you see right now, is a simple view of that. A Lake House basically is a combined term from Data Lake and Data Warehouse. Uh, it's a place uh, which, which is called now um, um, Lake House. It's a place basically that you can use to store both uh, structured data such as data tables uh, and unstructured data such as files, images, anything uh, you want. So basically you store all of those in one place. This is called Lake House. The Lake House concept itself is not for Microsoft. Other vendors also have Lake House. Now in this video, I'm talking about Lake House in Microsoft Fabric. So to create the lake house, um, you have to be in the Microsoft Fabric portal um, to enable it. I have a different video talking about how to enable it. But once you have enabled it, you would see a Microsoft Fabric portal, something like this, which you can start going to the Synapse Data Engineering, or you can switch to Data Engineering using this uh, button at the bottom uh, where you go to the data engineering. Uh, of course, you need to be in a workspace that has a uh, fabric license. You can apply for a trial fabric license for 60 days. There is no um, need for pay for anything. It just applies like that. I already have a trial fabric license as well. Now in here, you can create multiple objects. One of those is Lake House. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So to create a lake house, the first thing you need is a name. Let's say I would call it test lake house. Um, now, um, I've already created another lake house, which I'm going to show you that, but I'm just showing the experience at the beginning using this tech test lake house. When you create the lake house, it would create that like a logical layer that you can store both tables and files. As you see in here, we have that test lake house, which we can store tables and files. At the moment, I don't have anything in here. So you see it's <clears throat> pretty, empty. This environment that we are right now in it, it is Lake House Explorer. You will under, you will see what is in the Lake House and not. Now you can uh, load the data into the Lake House. In terms of files, you can upload the files. Uh, one of the ways is to upload it directly from here, um, like this. Or if you want to load data into the lake house, there are different ways. And these are some of those ways. You can create a J data flow gen two uh, or a uh, data pipeline, Azure Synapse pipeline or Azure Data Factory pipeline, notebooks. There are a few different ways that you can use to uh, load data into the into the into this structure. For example, Apache Spark job definition is another one of those. Um, but the one that I'm just showing you is the data flow gen two. Now, each of those requires a different video uh, to talk about different aspects of it, even the data flow gen two. So I'm not really going into the details of that data flow. I'll just show you the experience. So let's say I want to use that data flow Gen 2 to create that. Dataflow Gen 2 is basically similar to Power BI data flows, Power Query data flows with some additional uh, changes in it, which helps to create the lake house. So here I have the data flow editor. I can get data from any sources. I would start from Excel, but there are many 
other data sources that you can choose to get data from. I'll use Excel and I already have an Excel file in my OneDrive. You can get it from anywhere else if you like. Now in my OneDrive, I have a Adventure Works file. You can download this file from, from Radicat blog. And, <clears throat> and um, this is basically Power Query experience. I will see all the uh, tables in my uh, in my environment, I can go and select them. In this example, I'll just select one of these, but I'll show you another example, which I have multiple tables added. When I select the table, uh, I, I click on create. This will add that into the Power Query editor. This is the place that I can do data transformation. I can apply um, a lot of transformations options in Power BI. Um, let's say, for example, if I want to do transformation, grouping the data or anything like that, I won't do any transformation at this stage, I'll just keep it like that. Uh, but the main point here is that I want to use this to load into the data lake. Now we have this data destination, which is one of the differences of Dataflow Gen 2 versus the previous version of Dataflow. I can add a destination. I can store data into destinations such as Azure SQL Database, um, Lake House, which is the one that I'm going to use it. When you connect to the Lake House, you can set up your connections. In case this is not a Lake House you have created, someone else has created, you have access to it, you can go and choose it. Now here I would go and choose the lake house that I want. Your lake house should be under a folder. That folder is basically your workspace name, which here I have a workspace name and under that I would see my lake house. Now um, if you are using um, this, you would probably notice that your OneDrive for business folders are also here, which is kind of showing that the lake house is not just for the data tables, it is also for files. Right, so each of these is kind of showed in here. So I'm going to choose this. I would click next. Now this would um, suggest me that do I want to enter this data as a whole new data set? I want to replace whatever is in that um, table. So there is no table. Replace wouldn't be a problem. But if I already have data in that, I would have choose append. But I'm going to use replace. So save settings. As I said, I'm not really focusing on the data flow experience part of it. That requires a different video. So I've done this, now I go and publish this. Your data flow can include multiple tables. I just added one table for simplicity here. When I click on publish, this would create the data flow. Um, so the data flow is going to be created. I didn't put any name for it, so it is called data flow two. Now, Publishing a data flow doesn't load the data into a destination. To load the data into a destination, you have to refresh the data flow. So I would stay a little bit for the, this to, um, to finish uh, publishing, and then I would load it. While that is going on, I would show you that here for that lake house that I've created, three objects actually are created. One is the lake house itself. The other one is SQL endpoint, which I'm going to show you in a second. And the last one is a Power BI dataset, which is quite interesting one. There will be automatically generated the Power BI dataset for a lake house which is one of the interesting thing about it. So I would um, now go to my data flow. It is published. I'll refresh it. Um, obviously, this needs to be scheduled to refresh so that it automatically on a scheduled basis bring the data into that uh, lake house. Once that is completed, you can go to the lake house and see the data. Now, because this might take a while, I'll go to a lake house that I have created before. So this is another lake house that I have created, which already has some of these tables in it. Uh, as you see, this is the lake house editor. It gives me ability to see the table, the data in the tables. I can see the columns in each of these tables. Um, that is why it is called Lake House Explorer, because you can explore the data in here. In addition to exploring the data here, um, the Lake House comes also with a SQL endpoint. SQL endpoint is a quite interesting uh, concept because Lake House contains data tables and files to connect to these data tables you can use a SQL editor. So when I go back to my um, my workspace you see that for that Lake House I also have a SQL endpoint for that and this SQL endpoint if I click on it 
it will bring a online query editor experience for me, which I would see um, these um, tables, the data of the tables, and I can go and say, write a new SQL query. And here I can type anything I want, select star from the product category, for example. And when I run it, this will run and get me the result. And you see that this also has the intelligence options and um, and you can use it really simply. Like for example, I have a query already here written that is joining two tables together. Uh, now, not every SQL um, function or ability is possible here. This is a read-only experience. You cannot write the data, you cannot update the data, you cannot insert the data. That is one of the differences between Lakehouse and a data warehouse. If it was a data warehouse, you had those options too. Uh, in addition to writing SQL query like that, you can also go and create a visual query. Visual query is like a power query editor experience online. So here I can go and bring my queries over here, uh, product category and then product subcategory. Um, it takes a little bit of time for this to come. Um, so product subcategory, then I can merge these two as new. Uh, so I would say product category and subcategory. I'm merging them based on product category key here and product category key in the other one. As I said, it is taking a little bit of time. It is a preview uh, function at this stage. You can choose the join type that you want. I'm fine with this current join. Clicking on OK, this would build that query behind the scene for me. Uh, and I would see this data. So either SQL query or visual query. Now you might say, well, uh, I want to write SQL queries from something such as SQL Server Management Studio. You can do that too. And to do that, you can go to the settings in here. This would give you the SQL connection string, which you can use. You need your authentication using your Power BI account, or let's call it Microsoft Fabric account. And then you would be able to use it. Uh, now, the last thing is, well, uh, in addition to this method of reading the data, what other methods you can use to read the data? Well, you can create a Power BI report out of this. When I open Power BI Desktop, you need to be logged in with an account that has access to this workspace and this lake house, of course. And then uh, from Power BI Desktop, you would have the option to go under Data Hub and you would see data lake houses here. Um, which if you click on it, you would see all the data lake house, all the lake houses that you have access to it. So this is the lake house that I have access to it. Now, when I connect to it, I have two options. I can connect to it using the SQL endpoint, which will connect to the SQL database behind it. I would have the option to either have a direct query or import that data. Or when I say connect, which is the one that I'm going to show you right now, this will create a connection to a Power BI dataset. So this would be a report live connected to a Power BI dataset. Um, as you can see down here, this tells me that connected live to a Power BI dataset. I can then go and see some of this information as well. Like let's say, show me the sales amount, the total sales amount would be fetched from that um, live Power BI dataset. But where is that dataset? That dataset actually is in here. So in the same workspace that I have created that lake house, we have three objects. We have the lake house, we have the SQL endpoint uh, to it, and we have a dataset. This is that dataset that we are connecting to. Now this dataset is a Power BI dataset automatically generated to speed up your work so that you don't have to go and create that dataset. But what if you want to edit that dataset? Um, you can edit the dataset, but not from here. If you click on the dataset, there is no edit option, not at least at the moment. Uh, you can connect to it um, using Analyze in Excel or visualize the data by creating a report. But if you want to edit it, um, the way to do it would be going to the SQL endpoint. When you are in the SQL endpoint, you would be able to see the, the data. The query view is what you have saw before, something like that. And then the model part is where you do the data modeling. So here I have already done these modeling changes. I have created some of these relationships, but I'll just remove one of these and create one of them again so that you can see how this is, for example, between sales territory key. 
uh, between sales territory and this, I would create a relationship based on sales territory key. And you see how simple it is to create a relationship, something like creating relationship in Power BI Desktop. The UI experience might not be still the best yet. This is a preview option yet, but it is quite fascinating to see how you can actually edit your model in Power BI Online without needing a Power BI Desktop. And it would be automatically uh, changed the next time when you connect to it from Power BI Report, you'll see that experience. So here, if I go and build something with sales territory country, I would see this data presented here, which is based on that relationship that I created. So back to our lake house. Now this was a end-to-end -end example, and there are a lot of details in this that we talked uh, that we haven't talked about. Uh, this was a get to know of what is a lake house. It's a place that you can store structure and unstructured data in the same place. It comes with a SQL endpoint that you can connect to it. You can load the data into that using Dataflow Gen 2 pipelines or a few other methods. And that lake house automatically creates a, um, a data set which you can connect to it from the Power BI uh, to visualize the data. You might wonder what is the difference between lake house and the data mark then? So that is a different discussion. We will have that. Uh, discussed separately. Um, but for now, this was just an introduction into the lake house. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Data Analytics, Fabric, and Power BI. Thank you. Bye.